back here. Thank you. Uh, June the 15th at 9 a.m., early in the morning, 1555. <laughs> the year was 1555. Two men were led to their execution under the reign of Queen Mary in England. And their crimes cost them their life. They were condemned to burn at the stake for being heretics. One of the young men, he was 19-year-old John Leaf. The other, he was 45-year-old John Bradford. And is it as they were charged with crimes against Queen Mary, the Queen of England. As John Bradford was ready to die, he echoed these words over and over before he died. He said, O England, repent. Repent, O England, repent. The one who suffered with him, John Leaf, before he died, my brothers, he said, be of good comfort. For my friend and I, this evening, will be spending a happy supper with our Lord and Savior. Then he said, straight is the gate, narrow is the way, but few there who find it. One of John Bradford's last message that he ever preached in the presence of King Edward, he said this. As he was preaching, he said, Oh, England, you're secular. You are materialistic. You are hedonistic. You are lovers of pleasure more than lovers of God. And you are ripened for God's judgment. Well, the day is so much different. But the need of the hour is the same. And as John Bradford in that message, crying, O oh, England, repent, O oh, England, repent. I say, America, repent. Church of Jesus Christ, repent. Christian, repent. Sinner, repent. In the Oxford Dictionary of Quotations, John Bradford made this quote. There but for the grace of God go I. You've heard that? Said it? <laughs> there but for the grace of God go I. See someone on the streets, someone who is... Life has been destroyed. We say, oh man, but for the grace of God, there go I. As criminals were being led out to their execution, John Bradford said, there but for the grace of God goes John Bradford. He said it 466 years ago. And 466 years later, we're still saying it. But for the grace of God, it could be me. Someone who has destroyed or their life has um, been a, a devastation of sin. Some scandal has wrecked their life. And we humbly say, for the grace of God, there go I. I have to acknowledge the grace of God in my life. I have to acknowledge the grace of God in my life that keeps sin from defeating the grace of God in my life. Let me say it again. I have to acknowledge the grace of God in my life. In doing so, that keeps sin from defeating the grace of God in my life. Is it God's, you know, extended hand of, uh, uh, of favor? Uh, we are all, as followers of Christ, we are beneficiaries of the grace of God. 
But listen, one of the most dangerous statements that you could ever make, one of the most dangerous statements that I could ever make is, wow, that'll never happen to me. You know, somebody who's fallen into sin, somebody who's just wrecked their life, that, that'll never happen to me. Wow, mm, that scandal, oh, that won't ever happen to me. That's the worst thing a person could ever say. It's the worst thing. Listen, the Bible says in Corinthians, take heed lest you fall. Be, be aware, watch out. Be careful what you say. Listen, I'm called to battle sin. You're called as a follower of Christ to battle sin. I can't just passively sit back and trip over that uh, podium right there. <laughs> I can't just sit back and passively rely now follow what I'm about to say on just the grace of God. You understand? It takes action on my part. It takes action on your part. Yes, I love to receive the grace of God. I want to receive the grace of God to help me rely on the word of God that makes me obedient and to obey. So I must act upon and act out. Yes, I'm thankful for the grace of God. I love the grace of God, but I can't abuse the grace of God. I can't abuse the grace of God. I can't say, well, in a cavalier type spirit, well, God understands. God understands. Well, he does. He does. But we must be very careful. God is there. He is willing to help those who have stumbled. He understands when we have fallen into the sin. He understands when we're weak. He understands, you know, when our, our spirit is lethargic. He understands when we go through what we go through. And, and he understands all of this. But God corrects those that he loves to put them back on the path that they need to be on. Because you're a blessing. He has a blessing for you so you can be a blessing to someone else. He has a journey for you. He has a dream for you. He has a plan for you. And so he's bringing us back to his fold. He's bringing us back to that way that God has ordained us to go. But if we're not listening and if we're not receiving any kind of correction, if we're not receiving any kind of conviction, if we're not receiving any kind of calling uh, from the Holy Spirit while we're walking in the path that we want to walk on, here's what God said, I correct those I love, I correct those who I love. If there's no correction in my life and there's no conviction in my life, I gotta read between the lines. I may not be one of his children. I may be lost in sin, thinking, thinking that I am a child of God. But listen, when I willfully just go out time and time and time and time again, do you understand? I don't want to be lulled or pulled into this desensitization of sin or the dulling of my spiritual hearing or my spirit that's been dulled because because of sin. I don't want to find myself, and I have been, I'm sure you have been too in this latest season, we find ourselves a little complacent. You heard it from Missy, and you heard it from Kim, you know, the, they were unable to go to churches, that's how they're a, a, a full-on faith-supported, faith-based ministry, supported by churches and good people, but, it, you know, they've just, just like uh, a lot of others' ministries, you know, but we're about 60 to 75% back, you know, and we can begin to feel the energy again. And, uh, you know, we've done everything. We've done everything. We've, we've, we've listened to the state. We've listened to the governor. We've, uh, we've, we've, we've sprayed. Uh, we just, uh, we've disinfected everything. We did it between these services, and uh, we'll do it again at the end of this service, and we, we have tried to do our best to do uh, what everybody's asking us to do because we want to keep people safe. And I've talked to our older people on the, on the phone, and I, I call our legacy class that used to meet uh, on the uh, second and first and third Tuesdays of the month, and I, you know, I talk to them, and how's it going? Oh, it's fine. We're just, Matt, we just don't want, I, I said, I get it. I understand. Their health, their health's been compromised. I get it. I get it. Uh, you know, but 
if I'm not careful, there can be a, there can be a complacency. You know, and I can just give in to online, or I can just give in, and that's okay. Uh, it's, it's okay that we have it, and we've used it, but there's a time when you have to get back. You have to get back and trust God that he's going to take care of you. You know, this is, this is God's house. This is where we, this is where we worship. Uh, you know, I, I, my mother, she's in a facility, and my dad, and I don't want them going out. They just opened up the facility. I was able to go in for the first time in over a year and to be in that facility. And you know, it's been, but everybody's had to deal with it. A couple of weeks ago, my mother was at my brother's church where he retired. She's 93 years old. And you know, I was worried. I said, mom, you know, she's going to church today. I said, please wear a mask, wear a helmet, wear a hazmat suit. Just please gloves, boot up. She goes, don't worry about me. Don't worry about me. Well, two weeks ago, she went to a Saturday night open house, and she went to the 930 service and the 11 o'clock, and at the end of the service, the new pastor uh, said, hey, Miss Holman, come down here and sit in front, and people come by and see Miss Holman. I'm going, no, don't, what are you doing? I want to punch your face. What are you doing? And I went and stood by my mom, you know, and, you know, she took her mask off, and she's hugging people and kissing people and shaking hands. And I'm like, yeah, I, can, I can see the germs just working its way, you know, through the auditorium. But I said, you know what? God took care of her. And then she went to the dinner afterwards. And she's 93. She's sitting there at the table, and I went over and sat down. I said, are you okay? She said, quit worrying about me. You, you act like my mother. Quit. I said, you're a little rebellious, aren't you? She goes, yes, I'm a little rebellious. But you know what? God's taking care of her. And you know what? God will take care of us. Here's something. I realize and I know that, like that song, Redeemed, uh, when the ladies were doing the interpretive, uh, the hand motions, uh, you know, that old man that's inside of me. We still deal with the old flesh. We got the new spirit. The Holy Spirit is within us. So one I feed the most is going to be the strongest. And the spirit that is within that old man. I realize the root of sin lies within me. I also understand, you know, that if it weren't for the grace of God, I would fall. I thank, I thank him every day for his grace. But I've got to run from sin. I've got to flee from sin. And I know what Jesus said, that we have victory over the world and the flesh and the devil. That's a promise. But I know that God comes alongside of us, and he helps us. But it takes action on my part. It's not like just God dragging me by the hand, you know, and I'm just, and he's just dragging me, and he's up here, you know, and he's taking care of this one and this one. Come on, come on. And this, no, it doesn't work like that. Get up on your feet. Come on. I'm, I'm in front of you. And God is taking care of all those battles, those battles that we can't even see. And then he's behind us, and he's, and he's pushing us, and he's pushing us. And he's, he's, the Holy Spirit is all around us. He's beside us. On each side, he's got us covered. But it takes action on my part. I can't passively just sit back and just rely on God's grace. Although God's grace is within me and the power of the resurrection is within me. Oh, listen, I have to put on my gospel shoes every day. I got to put them on every day. I got I to prepare my soul. I got to prepare my mind. I got to prepare my spirit right here uh, with, with the word of God. I got to have the Word of God in my life, just like we heard on Tuesday night at Unbound. Uh, you know, read the Word of God e every day. You know, surround yourself with the Word of God. Know that the Word of God is what, what saves us. It, we rely on the Word. This is our strength. And then I open my spirit to the Holy Spirit, and, and I call upon the Holy Spirit, and I ask the Holy Spirit to help me. You know, uh, God, you, uh, Spirit, you've called me. You've convicted me. Has he called you? Has he called you to serve? Has he called you to do something? We've been challenged this morning by these young ladies and, 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 and by Kim and, and Missy. They've challenged us.
You know, what can we do? I'd love it if some of you ladies would come alongside some of these ladies and, and mentor them and help them. And, and, and you do a Bible study with them. Uh, you know, adopt them and, and just support them. And, and to know that what you, you do, God will take that and, oh, he'll do, he'll do some incredible things in your life. I promise when you're a blessing to someone else, like I asked last week to challenge you to be a blessing, oh, the, the blessings, the windows of heaven just open. And God begins to show you people who need Christ, and God begins to show you people who need help. An, and your spirit will rise up within you, and your spirit will be encouraged, and it'll be strengthened. Here's some verses for you so you can have... Uh, along the way, the first one is in John 18, verse 36. Here's what Jesus said. My kingdom is not an earthly kingdom. If it were, my followers would fight to keep me from being handed over to the Jewish leaders. But my kingdom is not of this world. We're not of this world. We're not of this world. Romans 6 one through four. Well then, Paul said, should we keep on sinning so that God can show us more and more of his wonderful grace? Of course not. Since we have died to sin, how can we continue to live in it? Or have you forgotten that when we were joined with Jesus Christ in baptism, we joined him in death for we died and we were buried with Christ by baptism, and just as Christ was raised from the dead by the glorious power of the Father, now we may also may live new lives. And then in Philippians chapter 4 and verse 13, for I can do everything through Christ who gives me strength. Ephesians 6 verse 12 and 13, for we are not fighting against flesh and blood enemies, but against evil rulers and authorities of, uns of the unseen world, against mighty powers in the dark world, and against evil spirits in heavenly places. Here's what we do, child of God. Therefore, put on every piece of God's armor so you will be able to resist the enemy in the time of evil, that after, then after that battle, you, you will still be standing firm. And then this is, this is so important, this verse. You take God's word, David said, and he hid it in his heart that he may not sin against God. I've hidden your word, Psalm 119, 11, in my heart that I might not sin against you. Let me make this statement. Never underestimate the power of the devil. Never underestimate the power of the devil. Let me say it again. <clears throat> Never underestimate the power of the defeated devil. He is defeated. He is defeated. And that is a great place right there to say amen. He is a defeated devil. I've said it before. You take the D off devil and you got evil. You take E off and you got vile. You take the V off and he makes me ill. You take the I off and he can go straight to L. Okay. Yeah. You're, o you're, <laughs> you're, you're overcomers. You're conquerors to those who love Christ Jesus. Greater is he that is in you than he that is in the world. You think Satan is, is out on attack today? Yeah, he's attacking. I shared with the first service. How about this? Nike's got a brand new shoe coming out, 2021. It's called the Satan shoe. That's not a good place to say amen. It's called the Satan shoe. And on the side, it has 666. And there's a verse on the bottom of the shoe, the side of the shoe. It's Luke 10, 18. And I saw Satan fall from heaven like a lightning bolt. Can you imagine? Now, there's a special, those, those shoes right there are $79 a piece. There is an extra special edition of that shoe. There are 666 pairs of the shoe. 
they are a thousand dollars a piece i will not mention his name but the performer and the artist who made this shoe uh, along with nike there is a drop of human blood in each shoe in the heel of the shoe and this performer in his newest graphic um, music a video he goes to hell and has a relationship with Satan listen Charles Swindoll said this know that Satan exists know that demons exist but leave them alone leave them alone don't mess with them when you open up the gates of hell you're only asking you think Satan man I'm so glad that Na that Nike's coming out with a shoe after me he, he could care less because he, he hates him just as much as he hates us because he's trying to take as many people to hell as he can take my daughter as most of you knows in Georgia now and she's working at a church down there I hate my son and I now hate her and she's down there in Georgia and for those of you who are visiting I'm teasing I just don't like them that's probably a better thing to say um, uh, but one of the ladies that works with her took her young son to the pediatrician last week and here's the question that this pediatrician in front of mom asked this boy are you attracted to any are you attracted to to are you attracted to males he's a boy are you attracted and then he, and then the pediatrician asked this question do you consider yourself a boy or a girl or other and here's what mom said what kind of questions are these that you're asking my son she said well this is what the state has mandated for us to well I'm I'm done with this office and she took her son and left can you imagine listen Satan is on the attack Satan is doing everything that he can to destroy what God ordained in the Garden of Eden. And he's coming fast, and he's coming hard at us, and he's doing everything that he can do to break up the nuclear family. Listen, God must be praised. God must be worshipped. We must be strong. We must understand that we got to get on. Uh, when Jesus rode through Jerusalem on that triumphant entry, as he rode into Jerusalem on that dawn, and those around him worshiping and laying down those palm branches and, and and Lord Hosanna 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 in the highest man we've got to refresh our spirits every day and know that he's for us and he's not against us and he said if any of them out there are for us they're not against us let's preach the gospel let's snatch people from hell as Jude says you know snatching them from the fires of hell uh, Paul actually said let's go out and compel them to come to the house of God that word actually compel means force because Paul knew that the judgment of God was coming and we've got to do our part in serving loving being kind and worshiping Jesus Christ until he comes again we'll work for him amen let's stand together Lord help us help us in this hour help us in this need help these beautiful young ladies God help us to come to the plate help us to just say Lord I'm available whatever you want me to do God I'm I'm asking for your spirit to fill us thank you for what we've witnessed here in the last few weeks we feel Lord we do we feel the fires and the spirit of revival we feel that people's hearts are being rekindled we feel like God that uh, what we've witnessed you're doing something Lord, we know that you told us that you want to uh, you want to be to us like you were to Jerusalem. You were you were dew. You were dew on the grass. And we understand when conditions are right, God, you show up. So we want to make sure that conditions are right. We want to make sure our hearts right. Heads are bowed and eyes are closed. If you're here today and you don't know Jesus personally as your savior, I ask you just to call upon his name. Just simply pray, Jesus, forgive me of my sins and come into my heart and save me. Thank you for saving me today. Lord, I'm asking you, I'm asking you to come into my heart. Thank you for forgiveness. Thank you for the love. Thank you for dying on the cross for me. Thank you for giving me eternal life. In the name of Christ, I pray. If you were here this morning and you prayed that prayer, please see us here at the end of this service. 
we'll be glad to talk to you about your newfound way in Jesus, uh, your new walk with the Lord, the Holy Spirit that now lives with inside of you, and how you can serve the King of Kings, and how you can grow in your faith, and how you can be a, be a help. I just met a young lady here this morning by the name of Fran. Only been coming a couple of weeks. And she was helping and, and cleaning and disinfecting between services. And, uh, you know, I didn't really know her with a mask. Uh, but I met her out here in the lobby. And I said, wow, you, you just jumped in. And uh, you know what? I love that. Man, God's just looking for people to do anything that he's called us to do so we can be a help in his kingdom. Man, I want to be a blessing to you. You know, I want to be an encouragement to you. But as Carrie and Danny and uh, the band leads us here in this, this song of invitation, let's find a place at the altar. Kneel, stand, and just ask God to help you. And ask God what you can do if God is calling you.